Hi, it's Ryan from Knights Around a Table. How's it going? You expect me to say something about a board game, I bet. Uh, today, no, no, I got no specific board game for you. I wanted to tell you that we're uh, celebrating a really cool milestone on the channel. We've got 8,000 subscribers. I don't know if I can <laughs> jimmy up some graphics that'll shoot, uh, whatever. Uh, exciting, very, very exciting. Uh, thank you so much if you subscribed. Hopefully you subscribed and you're watching and you're wondering, am I gonna say anything interesting? I think I will. Uh, I thought we'll do something special for 8,000. Now the big party is gonna be 10,000. Not to poop on 8,000. 8,000 is, uh, that's amazing. But I mean like 10,000 is when we got the elephants rented and everything. It's gonna be a whole, whoo, whole big thing. <laughs> but for 8,000, I thought that maybe I could tell you a little bit about myself because I haven't really shared that much of myself on the channel, except for the odd pantsless shot in How to Play Everdell video. I can see the views on that just spiking now because I said that. <laughs> uh, what uh, what I wanted to share, I guess I'll tell you uh, what my career's been like so far. You may not know it, but I'm actually a game designer, a game developer. I've been a professional game developer for my entire career, and I spent the first 15, 17 years of it making video games, mostly web games for kids' television companies and kids' uh, TV shows. That was really fun. Uh, if you know me for anything, I mean, if you ever played uh, YTV games back in the day, YTV is like uh, Canada's Nickelodeon. If you ever played games on their website uh, between 2000 and 2007, then I probably had a hand in making a bunch of those. Uh, and then after that, I had my own studio and I made a game called Sissy's Magical Ponycorn Adventure, which you may have played. If not, go to ponycorns.com, it's very fun. And I made that with my five-year-old daughter, Cassandra, who you've seen on the channel lately, who's much more grown up now. And we actually gave a TEDx Toronto talk about that experience and my hot take on technology and education. And that's all sort of uh, been underscored by the pandemic recently and, and, and the school board's attempt to teach kids remotely. And I don't know that it's gone all that well, but they were kind of caught unawares to be fair to them. Then after that, I ran a company called LockQuest. So I ran my own Escape the Room game company. And then LockQuest, I've done service work with LockQuest to create puzzles for customers like Niantic. And we worked with the CBC on some puzzles for one of their shows. So lots of fun, cool, gamey, puzzly, designy stuff. And I've been picking up little piecemeal bits here and there since then. But mostly, uh, most of my time has been devoted to this channel. So it's really nice to see stuff happening. I do have a very big, exciting announcement in the works. I can't tell you quite yet, but we're only a couple of weeks off it. So hang tight and something cool is going to happen. It's cool. I'm excited. You might not be excited. <laughs> I just took the wind out of my own sails. It's very exciting. So I mentioned all of that just as a preface to what I wanted to talk about in this video, which was that my video game developer friend, Michael Todd, who prefers to be called Mike, but I'm calling him Michael Todd to the day I die. <laughs> he wrote me on Facebook this week and he said that he's working on a game, a digital game, where he has to design an icon. He's got a bunch of resources in the game and he needs an icon that means any resource. So he's thinking like, do, what do I do, like a question mark? And then he asked me, in the board games that you've played, who's got the best icon that means anything? And I thought, well, that's really fascinating. That's, that's neat to think about because I, I never even gave it a whole lot of thought. I know when they're bad and they don't work and you have to check the rule book and go, what the heck is that supposed to mean? So because I have memento disease, except without all the cool tattoos and the ripped body and Guy Pierce's stunning good looks. Uh, I could only remember back as far as like the last few games that I I played or looked at. So, the three that came to mind were, in order of not so good to fantastic, were Everdell, Wingspan, and Anachrony. So let me talk about the any icons in those three games. By the way, obligatory poop on Starling Games. I hate their guts, but I like their game. But poop on them. Everdale has a few different resources. They've got a few different base resources and then like the more expensive resource, which is stone. So usually I think they're any icon, uh, without looking at it actually, I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna put it in this video and post, but I'm pretty sure that the base resources, the twigs, the berries, the resins, am I missing one? Twigs, berries, resins. I'm not too sure if the stone's in there, but what they did was they, they drew a basket and they threw all that stuff in there. And that's their any icon, that means any resource. 
And I advised my friend Michael Todd against doing something like that because he's working uh, really small sizes. He's working with pixel art and I just, you know, it's gonna get crowded and muddy and complicated and you're gonna go, what the heck is that thing? So that's an approach. I don't think it's the best approach by any means. On to wingspan. So wingspan has five different food types and they all have icons on them. They got berries and they got rodents and they've got fish, but they're all circular and they're all a different color. And so what they did for their any icon is they have a little pie graph, like a little wheel, and each wedge of the wheel represents a different color of one of those food resources. So they've matched the shape and they matched the color, which I thought that was a pretty clever way of, of saying, of signifying any. That was kind of neat. But it's not the best. The best one that I can think of that stood out in recent memory was from Anachrony. That's a game that I'm working on bringing a how to play video to you, but it's a lot of work. So <laughs> hang tight, it's coming. What they did is their resources are cubes. They've got three cheap resources and one purple cube that's an expensive resource. So their icon for any is a cube in perspective. So you can see the three faces on the cube and each one is the different colors of the diff three different, you know, sort of cheap resources. And I thought that was really elegant, simple, kind of brilliant solution for an any icon. I thought it was pretty neat. And just to give them further shout out, the iconography is great in that game. And another really cool thing they did was whenever you have to pay a resource in that game, they have the picture of it and they put, like how cool is this? They put a hole underneath it, meaning like you're losing it because it's going down the hole. <laughs> that was really cool. That's a great, that's a great idea. And it was like almost immediately clear. It's like, oh, that it's just stark and smart. And you don't have to squint a lot trying to figure out what that icon means. Any of these games where they try to make it uh, as language independent as possible and really heavily reliant on icons, whenever we've got icons that are easy to figure out, easy to learn, or really clear when you look at them, that's a boon. That's fantastic. And it reminded me of Terra Mystica, which... I mean, if you want the opposite of game, I think how not to do it. Um, so if there's, they do the opposite, it's not about everything means pay except when you get. And what they did to signify get in Terra Mystica is they have this little hand that means income, like resource, please. Uh, but the, the issue with that is there are priests in the game, for example, Everything's really representative. So it's these crude wood blocks. So the priest is a little, you know, meepo like this with his arms out and the buildings are da -da -da, like a tan style, you know, just housey kind of things. So you've got this representative image that means priest, but they have, you have this semi-realistic rendering of a hand underneath it. Like you have to, pay, uh, you get a priest when you see that hand. And I just thought it was kind of like a, I don't know, it was jarring. I didn't like the mixture of those two styles. When you go back to Anachrony, oh, it's beautiful. You got a water droplet, that means you get water. If there's a water droplet with a hole underneath it, that means you pay water. If you put a number in the water droplet, that's how many water you have to pay. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So if uh, Michael Todd uh, phoned your house, uh, first of all, call the police, he shouldn't be doing that. But if he did and he said, hey, I need your advice, what's the coolest any icon that you've seen in a board game? How would you answer that? Have you seen anything that does it more elegantly than Anachrony? I wanna hear, I didn't go through my whole collection and cheat and look at every single any icon that I could find, but maybe you wanna do that. And if you do that and you find one that's really cool, let me know about it and talk to me in the comments section below because I'd love to hear it. See you next time. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.